Greta Replay Score is the face of We Need Environmental Solutions. However, unknown to the world, like Gore, Greta is a preventing solutions fraud. At Davos 2020, Gore met Greta and praised her call to action in speaking truth to power with the quote, Our house is still on fire. Your inaction is fueling the flames by the hour. Actually, Alvi, your in all environmental voices in action since November 93 is why the house is on fire. Greta's in action since Earth Day 2019 is why the fire isn't being put out. I'm Eileen Connors, the environmental educator who has called you and all environmental voices to action and spoke truth to you in power since shortly after November 93 when the environmental educator started when I started trying to get you to end global environmental illiteracy, end our disposable society, and get a solutions movie made and seen at a minimum at every school in America with a night showing for adults. A solutions movie over a decade before your inconvenient truth crying for solutions. The first reply I got was this September 95 letter from Gore's subordinate. In January 98, I met Joe Kennedy, who was so impressed with me and my work that he got my request past Gore's subordinates to Gore. Then I got this 98 letter from Gore, stating Gore thoroughly read and carefully considered my comments, but will continue the solid record of achievement that characterized the administration, which is proven to be hugely negative. Just like I told Gore would happen if he refused real solutions. Then I got this 99 letter, stating Gore is impressed with my work and thanks me for bringing the proposal to his attention, But again, Gore refused the light year's best solutions that would have solved our global environmental problems decades ago had Gore or anyone allowed solutions. Years later, I tried to get an injunction preventing Sundance from showing Gore's second movie because Gore, Redford, and Sundance have refused to get the environmental education agenda and solutions movie The World Needs to the World since 94. On January 11th, The hearing was scheduled for Tuesday, January 17th, two days before Gore's second fraudulent movie opened Sundance 2017. So for six days, Gore, Redford, and Sundance were petrified that their truth would be exposed. The odds a Park City, Utah court would expose them as environmental frauds were slim, but I tried. I believe from hearing this once in the hearing, the judge ruled Sundance irreparable harm was greater than mine. Earned global humiliation is an irreparable harm, but the truth remained unexposed and the three carried through with their fraud and showed the movies. The Oscars took the fraud seriously. I'm why Gore didn't get a second Oscar or be a finalist who would have been a part of the week-long press fest before the event that Redford and Sundance tried to get Gore in. Then, on April 28th, 2017, Gore's office thanks me for my interest in the crucial work Gore does for the planet, but is sorry it's unable to implement solutions. I said, nice try, but Gore's office then replied to me, please consider taking action that can be of use as opposed to sending pointless emails, because it is pointless to ask Gore to implement environmental solutions, which I've known for decades. I've known it about Greta since April 23rd, 2019. So I proved to the Nobel that Greta is a preventing solutions fraud, which is why Greta didn't get a Nobel. I told the Nobel not to give Gore a Nobel, and I endlessly tell them to take Gore's back. I also told the Livelihood Award that Greta is a fraud and don't give Greta their award. I didn't know there was a Livelihood Award until they announced Greta was their winner. Then I started contacting the Livelihood But if the livelihood said, on second thought, we're going to give this to someone else, Greta would be exposed. The Nobel announced Greta was in contention. I contacted them a lot with Greta, youth groups, and environmental organizations on distribution, proving they all prevent solutions. So it was easy for the Nobel to just somehow, against all odds, not choose Greta while not exposing her. Now the livelihood is giving Greta this award, fully aware Greta is a preventing solutions fraud, just like Greta's first boat ride across the Atlantic knew, but sailed her anyways. Now I tell the livelihood they need to take Greta's back, just like I tell the Nobel and Oscars they must take Gore's back, just like I did in December 2019 when Time Magazine announced Greta is their person of the year. I emailed Time telling them this must be undone but time won't. We've all suffered through Greta's. How dare you? 
How dare you not give her solutions? How dare you continue to look away and come here saying that you're doing enough when the politics and solutions needed are still nowhere in sight? On September 23, 2019, Greta told the world the solutions are nowhere near in sight, yet since five months earlier, on April 23rd, 2019, Greta has refused the solutions the world needs, the solutions the UN has refused for decades. Greta continues. We will not let you get away with this. Right here, right now, is where we draw the line. <laughs> Greta, you have no line to draw. You prevent massive, immediate environmental betterment. But Greta is right about one thing. I should yeah, then Greta lets us know. You are failing us. But the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. Greta, you are the global fraud there is no forgiveness for. This is what the world needs. One, and global environmental illiteracy. I'm just going to teach you these three things now. First, the troposphere is the first layer of Earth's atmosphere. It extends five miles above the poles and ten miles above the equator. On global average, seven and a half miles above your head. It's where all life and weather happens. It's where Earth's greenhouse effect happens. And today, it is said where global warming happens. Second, every gallon of gas burn emits 20 pounds of carbon dioxide into the troposphere. Third, disposable products spend less time being used than they do in their manufacturing, packaging, transportation, and disposal processes. That is a big percentage of our environmental problems. Your environmental IQ just increased. This is a small part of what all environmental voices have prevented since November of 93. We also need to and our disposable society, from homes to fast food to stadium concessions to packaging and transportation packaging. Three, gain individual cooperation. Four, leadership by example. Five, hemp. And last, clean energy. But Greta won't do this. Maybe in part because Rebel News has shown us that Greta leads a beyond environmentally abusive disposable life. Well, today we are here at the COP25 summit, as they call it, and we're gonna be asking the folks here what they think about St. Greta's sin. You might notice in this footage is climate contraband. There is plastic water bottles, there's plastic grocery bags, there's plastic utensils in her containers of beans that she's littered around the back of her dumpster, I mean, in the back of her Tesla. There's everything. This is a car full of climate contraband, and we're going to ask these folks here at the COP25 summit what they think about it before they know that it's Greta's car, of course. We'll tell them that after the fact. Let's go see what they have to say. Do you think that the people that refuse to avoid using plastic, are they responsible? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to think much of it, and it's just one world. Why? What do you think Greta Thunberg would say to people who continue to use plastic even though they know how damaging it is to the environment? Uh, I think she would be very angry at them. Stop using plastic because it will help a great deal. Do you think maybe these people are just uneducated? They don't know what's going on? Yeah, 100%. I think it's just a matter of them learning. Shame. Shame. We, we see lots of people driving Teslas, you know? And they're like, oh, we're saving the environment. But in the Teslas, in the cup holder, is a plastic water bottle. Do you think some of these people are just hypocrites? Honestly, yeah. I th you think? Well, nobody, nobody should use plastics in the first place. But I don't know what is the source, so I'm afraid I cannot I really it. say. I took it myself. Keenan finishes up. I want to believe it. That it's not that it's not Greta, Greta's car. I, I want to believe that it's not her, and I can't confirm it. So I will not talk about her. Now I'm sorry to say, but it it was her car. As much as you didn't want to believe it, it it was Saint Greta's Pope mobile, really, full to the brim, chock full of climate contraband. It breaks my heart. 
We spoke to so many people today who just couldn't believe it. We watched them cycle through the stages of grief, not believing that St. Greta was a sinner, just like everybody else. For Rebel News in Madrid, I'm Kian Bexi. Imagine when the youth learned that since April 2019, Greta has prevented this. Had Greta acted, we would have achieved more betterment in the last nine months than all environmental voices have achieved in half a century of proven failed efforts. Global environmental illiteracy in our disposable society would be ending. Had Greta said we need to convert disposable stadium concessions to reusable, stadiums would do it. I've tried. I've called them all and I've been laughed at. One lady told me no one would do that, yet they are all claiming to be green. The U.S. Tennis Open refuses. Since June 2012, Billie Jean King has refused to lead the world with reusable stadium concessions and much more. In February 2013, the U.S. Tennis Association President Gordon Smith joined Billie Jean. Roger Federer has refused since Greta criticized him. Roger replied that he is a fervent supporter of universal education we should examine our behaviors and act on innovative solutions, as he, he's committed to using his privileged position to dialogue important issues with his sponsors. The environmental educator presented Rogers Foundation solutions his workplaces should lead with, never expecting that to happen. His foundation CEO, Janine, replied with ridiculousness that you can read, but she brushes off Roger standing behind his words. I told Billie Jean to get this to Roger, but that's awkward because Billie Jean has prevented these solutions. I also told Serena of Serena's Ventures, whose website is headed with Ignite Change because she invests in founders who are changing the world with their ideas and products. And to do that, Serena will use her vast network like the Met Gala crowd who seeks environmental solutions. And she hopes to make a difference, but won't environmentally not even for the child she brought into the world. So I doubt Serena will say, hey, Raj, maybe you'll care about your kid's future. I've said Roger can act when innovative solutions are given to him and get the French Wimbledon and U.S. Open leading with reusable stadium concessions in 2020. He can say his workplaces and sponsors are excited to be working with the environmental educator. His family has learned from the environmental educator education. They are assessing their actions and others should too like National Geographic should. The environmental educator entered Nat Geo's Chasing Genies contest for environmental solutions a few years ago. The environmental educator's agenda to end global environmental illiteracy and our disposable society, including converting disposable stadium concessions to reusable, wasn't even a finalist. Nat Geo's rewarding remedial winner planted a few trees. Nacio has refused many environmental educator requests for real solutions. Yet on January 30th, 2020, Nacio wondered if stadiums could be zero waste, something they've been preventing for years. If Greta said do this, stadiums would. But Greta prevents solutions, just like if many others had acted, the world wouldn't have gotten on fire, like the U.S. Green Chamber of Commerce, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Washington Governor Jay Inslee, Seattle, Seattle again, Bill Gates and his foundation for about a decade, Starbucks, Justin Trudeau, Bill McKibben and his God Earth to 400, plus Earth Guardians, Our Children's Trust, the Sunrise Movement refuses solutions that will achieve massive immediate betterment, instead advocating for Green's newest disaster, whose non-solutions tyranny will produce a small amount of what they prevent now, years to a decade in the future. Bono's One has refused to achieve their goal to solve our global environmental problems in a decade from when they first opened in 2004. So, Bono opened a second organization to solve our global environmental problems, the RISE Fund, the RISE Fund which also refuses solutions as does two other Rice Fund founders, Richard Branson and Steve Jobs' wife, Laureen Powell Jobs, whose Emerson Collective won't allow solutions. So they started a second organization also to prevent the solutions their first organization prevents. So shut up, Bono, Richard, and Laureen. 
Same for Redford and Sundance. I got this in an envelope with no return address, dated September 13, 2006, months after Sundance showed Gore's fraudulent, inconvenient truth. It reads, Happiness, Robert Redford. The NRDC, Seattle, Sundance again, Harvard, Clintons and Carter, the Royals, Harry, Meghan, Will, Kate, and Charles, who flew 16,000 miles on three private flights and one helicopter before he met Greto in Davos. Charles has been on the environmental betterment job for decades. I told Charles in my book about a decade ago, you might have to tone Royal down a bit, but Charles hasn't. So Greta and Charles associate. Michael Bloomberg thanked me for my patience as they hire staff twice before I got the final no thanks, which came two days before Bloomberg announced his remedial environmental presidential agenda with goals to years to a decade in the future, but stated, as president, I will launch a full-scale effort to fight climate change and strengthen America's resilience we don't have any time to waste, but Bloomberg is wasting time refusing solutions that will produce massive immediate positive results, as his philanthropy has done for years. But Bloomberg joined Jimmy Fallon, stating he will do what Trump won't, work for the environment, which is false. To be fair to truth, Jimmy needs to do another skit with Trump, saying he legalized hemp, which did more environmental good than any other administration and that Mike prevents real solutions. And if Mike had implemented real solutions years ago, the environment wouldn't be on Trump's desk. Big Sky Montana with four ski areas also has no respect for the environment. When Big Sky newspapers won't let you run paid ads, and you take science to the street asking Big Sky to lead the world environmentally and get great global press forever, the private Yellowstone Club sends their plows to destroy your signs. The town enjoyed this violent assault along with preventing solutions themselves and blacklisting you from employment for asking. This is how Big Sky treats you if you ask them to be decent people. But if you are like not protecting our winners, who cheerleads we need solutions while not having any, while simultaneously preventing solutions, then Big Sky Resort gives your fraudulent organization five to $9,000 and Patagonia gives you $150,000 or more, but Patagonia has exactly not one cent or their voice for real solutions that would create massive immediate environmental betterment. Also preventing solutions is Mr. B.S. Bernie Sanders and his comrade, Oasis Crazy, who said if you have better solutions than her Green's newest disaster, then step up and stop screaming from the cheap seats. But Oasis Crazy won't lead with solutions that will produce massive, immediate results and is in her communist tyranny of carbon taxing you into poverty and retrofitting every building while refusing right now to get people to turn off 40% of electricity that is unused or not used disposable. Neither will any governor, presidential candidate, or congressman, many of which stood with the youth striking for solutions. That includes... Chair of the House Select Committee on the Climate Crisis, Kathy Castor, who received this January 30th, 2020 email from me after she, in violation of her oath to the Constitution, instructed a private company to censor climate denier videos because the climate crisis is so important. I told Kathy, then finally be the one who gets the needed solutions implemented. One of the biggest Climate misinformation is that Congress cares about implementing real solutions, with Ka which Kathy continues to prove. On September 26, 2019, The Intercept's founder, Glenn Greenwald, co-founder Jeremy Scahill, and editor-in-chief Betsy Reed was added to the Environmental Educator just about daily email to environmental voices and propaganda outlets. Glenn is not the journalist he misleads you to believe he is. The Intercept won't report environmental truths, including on their September 24th, 2019, uh, September 4th, 2019, A Right to a Future Evening, honoring Greta and XIU, whatever his name is. Betsy starts the evening off. At The Intercept, we produce investigative journalism that uncovers unjust injustices in the hope that in the end, suffering and oppression will be lessened. 
We've exposed the killing of civilians in the U.S. military's drone war, the abuse of immigrants in ICE detention, the hypocrisy of politicians who claim to care about our climate, yet take money from the very industries that created the chaos we're in. Recently, we revealed the corrupt process that led to the election of Brazil's far-right president, Jair Bolsonaro, the man whose policies are so hostile to the environment that he might as well have lit the match that set the Amazon ablaze. While we believe this journalistic work is critical, we also know that, like being sorry, just telling stories and conveying facts is not enough. Without people who take action based on the facts before them, we're nowhere. That's why it's so critical that today's global youth movement is saying no to business as usual in the face of the facts of the climate emergency. And it's why tonight we're handing the mic to some amazing young people who, could, who can help guide us toward a different future. Speaking of hypocrites, Betsy, you, Naomi, and these youth are the ones who claim to care about our climate, but say no, absolutely no, and they prevent the solutions they demand others give them. The Intercept brought XIU, whatever his name is, on stage, who is the face of the youth versus U.S. climate case, which got dismissed in January 2020. Good because XIU and the rest of his preventing solution fraud plaintiffs are beyond abusing the United States court system. This is a July 10th, 2019 email to him, Earth Guardians, Greta and the Sunrise Movement. XIU replied that if I don't stop this nonsense, we are going to report you for harassment. This nonsense was telling them to get on the solutions that are on their desk or shut their fraudulent doors. XIU, whatever his name is, sent me a December 7th, 2018 reply of LOL, lots of laughs or laugh out loud when I reminded him that he and his co-plaintiffs and his buddies, Bill McKibben and Mr. B.S. San Bernie Sanders are preventing solutions frauds. I, told, I tell him to get on solutions or close his fraudulent doors and lawsuits. This is LOL funny to XIU, whatever his name is, who Naomi Klein describes as an amazing young leader. I want to thank those three amazing young leaders. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Truth and fire. That is what we need. And our next speaker embodies these twin imperatives with every word that she speaks and every choice that she makes. Really? Except, Naomi, like you, Greta and friends are preventing solutions frauds. To the rich and mighty in Davos who praised her for giving them hope, she replied, I don't want your hope. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear that I feel every day. I want you to act. I want you to act as you would in a crisis. I want you to act as if the house is on fire because it is. Look at how serious she looks. Oh my God, the house is on fire. Our leaders are not behaving as if we were in an emergency. Greta, you aren't acting like it's an emergency. You haven't acted on solutions that would produce massive, immediate environmental betterment since April 23rd, 2019. Had you acted, I would have achieved more, light years more environmental betterment in the last nine months than all environmental voices have achieved in half a century of proven failed efforts. Naomi should have acted years ago when solutions were put on her desk. Instead, Naomi has refused solutions, which is the match that lit that fire. Yeah, but here Naomi goes again. But Greta is not all talk. All of this began with action. <laughs> Greta is just full of action. We do not have to wait. We can start the change right now. We, the people. Thank you. Except, Greta, you won't, just like you haven't. 
Another preventing solutions organization is the Global Campaigner for Good, Bono's One, which opened in 2004 with the goal to solve our global environmental problems in a decade. But one refused solutions, so a decade later, one up their goal to achieve in the next 15 years, but still, one refused solutions. On November 28, 2018, I again asked one to achieve their goal. One replied, we don't do the environment. I replied back, yeah, you do. Your website mission page right now says that you are going to solve the climate crisis in 15 years. The action one took was one took this statement off their website. But one resurfaced environmentally when it was discovered that Greta Handler on her summer 2019 tour was One's Youth Climate Ambassador, Lisa Marie Neubauer. So again, One does do the environment, but only if you don't have solutions, but endlessly scream for solutions that you are proudly preventing. Then One partners with you. Greta is also proud to meet with Barack because Barack cares about the environment, except the truth is Barack has been preventing solutions since his first presidential campaign. So Barack and Greta get along and cheerlead each other, but Greta steers Trump down. Trump, who legalized hemp, which did more environmental good than Clinton, Gore, or Barack would, but with no environmental understanding, Greta doesn't realize this is the action she is screaming for our leaders to do, or that Trump withdrawing America from the Paris Agreement is irrelevant because it will achieve the same results as every other environmental agreement has achieved for half a century, hugely negative. But it also doesn't realize that if any environmental voice implemented solutions since November 93, I would have solved our global environmental problems decades ago, and the environment wouldn't be on Trump's desk, and the world wouldn't have suffered through Greta. What can each of us do to fight climate change, to get aware and to try to understand what is going on, what is happening, and also, of course, to put pressure on people in power. And Greta's wrong answer is worthless. People have been aware for decades. The correct answer, answer is to end your global environmental illiteracy and become the solution each person is. The government, big business, and big oil didn't create our environmental problems. People doing dozens of irresponsible daily actions did. Actions that are all easily replaced with responsible actions, like starting with turning off the estimated 40% of electricity that is unused and don't do disposable, which would be massive immediate betterment. So Greta, go home, go to school, or go to Oz and see if he has a clue or some substance for you. You cry that the biggest experiment we are doing on Earth is with the Earth and that time is running out but you refuse to take action and put the fire out. I've told Gore and many others for decades, screaming for solutions isn't a solution and neither is preventing solutions. To get the truth known that all environmental voices are preventing solutions frauds, like and share this video. Not even independent media will report this truth. Alex Jones and Infowars have bashed Gore for years, and, and now they bash Greta, but they won't expo expose them as the frauds that they are. Neither will so many other independent media, because global warming isn't real. You know, Dave Hodges at the Common Sense Show doesn't do the environment, but I'm sending Dave this video asking that he forward it to his contact that gets things to Trump. So Trump shares this video with his 71.5 million Twitter followers. The environmental educator called out the propaganda outlets a decade ago in my book. The EE continues to prove that censoring real truth in her daily emails and propaganda. What? The EE continues to prove they're censoring real truth in my daily emails with propaganda who, who provides emails on distribution here. You know, they're, they're here. I, I email a bunch every day. A lot of them don't give you contacts, but every day I continue to prove that they're preventing solutions frauds. So do you want environmental solutions or fraudulent environmental voices exposed? 
Are you being robbed donating to prevent solutions organizations like Boar's Climate Unreality, the NRDC, Sundance, Earth Guardians, 350, Protect Our Winners, etc.? Put your dollars to a non-fraud. Support the environmental educator at patreon.com.